If you're looking to create graphics elements such as a basic logo to establish branding across your website, or add stylized borders and other decorations to enhance the visual impact of your photographs, then stick around as in this video I'll be showing you how to get the job done easily with Affinity Photo's Shape Tools. But first, what are the Shape Tools? Shape Tools allows for creating geometric shapes, which can be styled and manipulated non-destructively. These tools are useful for design work, photo compositing, masks, and creating graphics elements. One advantage of Shape Tools is it is vector-based, meaning it uses mathematical formulas, not pixels, so you can scale them up and down infinitely without any loss of sharpness or clarity. This ideal for logos, icons, and UI elements that may be used at multiple sizes. To demonstrate the Shape Tools and learn about its best features, Let's use it to create a logo for a fictional coffee shop. And the logo will be inspired by the familiar Starbucks logo. So here I am in Affinity Photo. To start off, let's create a new document. I'll click File, New. I'll set the resolution to 1000 by 1000 pixels. I'll navigate to the Color tab and set the background to Transparent. I'll click Create. There, our document is created. Next, let's add in a circle to serve as our background. I'll select Ellipse. I'll drag in the shape. As you can see, the shape is drawn from the left top corner. In our case, however, it would be more preferable to draw from the center. To do that, I'll simply hold down the Command key or control key on Windows while dragging. Another common requirement when drawing shapes is to constrain the proportions to equal height and width. Currently, the shape is being drawn unconstrained. To constrain the proportions, simply hold down the Shift key while dragging. And as you can see, that creates a perfect circle. Another common task is to do both. Draw from the center while maintaining a perfect circle. To do that, simply hold down both the Shift key and Command key or Control key on Windows while dragging. Next, let's change the fill color of the circle. And that brings us to the first powerful feature of shapes, customizability. Each shape tool has adjustable settings available in the context toolbar, such as size, corner radius, number of sides, etc. In our case, Let's use the context toolbar to change the fill color. I'll click on the fill swatch. I'll set the RGB values for a brown color. There, the background of the logo is done. Next, let's add in some white rings similar to our reference logo. Thankfully, Affinity Photo has a tool just for that, the donut tool. I'll select it from the toolbar. Once again, I'll draw it from the center by holding down the Shift and Command key as I drag. There, the donut has been added in, and a new layer is created at the top of the layer stack. I'll set the fill color to white. With the donut layer selected, I'll change the whole radius setting to 97%. There, the first ring is done. Next, let's do the second. For this, I'll just duplicate the first donut layer via Ctrl-C and Ctrl-V, and I'll size the donut accordingly. Next, let's add in our text. And that brings us to the second powerful feature of Affinity's shapes, text in shape paths. As the name suggests, shapes can be used as paths for text to follow, allowing for text to be wrapped around curves or outlines of shapes. Since we want to add text to follow a circular path, I'll add in a circle. I'll set the opacity to invisible so I can only see the outline. Next, I'll select the Artistic Text tool. Notice that as my cursor touches the path, the cursor changes from an A to a T on top of a curve. And that signifies we can add text to the path. I'll click on the path. 
As you can see, that adds in a green triangle handle. I'll set the opacity back to 100. I'll type the text. I'll adjust a number of font properties such as size and color. I'll drag the triangle handle to position our text to the center. Next, let's reduce the spacing between the characters, and you can do that by clicking on Text, Spacing, Titan. Alternatively, you can also use the key combination Option plus the left arrow key or Alt plus the left arrow key on Windows. Next, let's add in our separator dots which will basically be two ellipse shapes. Next, let's add in our bottom text in the same fashion as the top text. This time, I'll increase the spacing between the characters via the menu, or you can also use the shortcut key option plus right arrow key or Alt plus right arrow key on Windows. So there you go, the text is looking good. Next, let's add in the center image. Instead of a mermaid though, as in the reference logo, let's use a coffee bean image for our logo. Unfortunately, however, Affinity does not have a coffee bean shape tool. And that brings us to the third powerful feature of shapes in Affinity, the ability to create custom shapes. But before I demonstrate how to do that, let's first add a reference bean image on which to base our custom shape. Next, I'll use the tool which allows for creating custom shapes, and that tool is the pen tool. I'll select the tool from the toolbar. In case you didn't know, the pen tool allows for drawing completely custom vector shapes by placing and manipulating anchor points. It's similar to the pen tool in Adobe Illustrator or Photoshop. To create the shape, I'll add anchor points along the outline of the beam. There, the shape has been created. Unfortunately though, the shape is not perfect. The line segments are too straight and don't match the smooth curves of the reference image. No problem, let's fix that with another tool called the Node tool which will allow for fine tuning the shape. I'll choose the Node tool from the toolbar. I'll drag on the various line segments and anchor points to improve the fit. And there you go, a better looking bean shape. Next, I'll hide the reference image. I'll set the opacity back to 100. I'll set the color of our new bean shape to a golden color. Next, let's create the other half of the bean. To do that, I'll duplicate the current bean shape. I'll use the handles to rotate and position the bean into place. And there you go, our final vector-based graphic. Let's add it into an image. But first, we need to export our graphic as a PNG. Next, let's paste in our graphic into our image. And there you go, the image is now enhanced by our fancy new logo. Not bad for a few minutes work. So that's how you create great looking graphics with Affinity's shape tools. As you can see, it's not really all that difficult and it's plenty powerful. So I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you use vector-based graphics in your own work. And what are your favorite vector-based tools? Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.